Hey everyone, Justin here from the Crit Academy. Today we're going to be giving a review of Money Master's Guide, Game Mastering for Fun and Profit. Um, it is worth noting this is a paid sponsorship. I am still going to give my honest opinions and thoughts on it. Um, a lot of it I really, really like, so it will be positive, which is why I agreed to let us uh, have it as a sponsorship. So how about we get into it? Let's pop this up and you can uh, kind of see as we're going along here. The, a lot of the advice in this book is very well defined, researched, and um, has a lot of analytics behind it. It is actually a very good read. Um, RJ Productions did a really good job giving us good, honest um, details and basing it on data. With that, it is not a, a supplement, but a tool for us to take our favorite hobby, whether it's board games, card games, RPGs, and find a way to um, monetize it in a fun way. Because if you're like us and you're trying to become a, a, a small business, it definitely requires more work. And Money Master's Guide really gives you the tools and <clears throat> everything you kind of need to get started and, and know where to go. Honestly, I wish we had this when we started. It probably would have made our, our job a little easier here at Crit Academy. So why don't we de dig into this? Now, Ray's uh, writing is a lot like a speech, and it has a bit of like, humor here and there, which I think really breaks up the uh, monotony of some of the other um, uh, interesting uh, detail. So as you can tell, it's got 12 solid chapters of very well-defined tools that we can use to um, earn money. In chapter one, it really goes over, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the details of knowing your audience and, and stuff like that. And I think that's important. You hear a lot in the industry of niching down to is getting as far down as you can. By targeting a specific uh, audience, um, you can you kind of know what that audience is, wants and and um, how to deliver that that um, need that they have. So chapter one talks about the imagination currency conversion machine. He does get into the the, the raw details of um, finding a way to you know uh, connect and build a strategy. Once again, talking about the details of you know building around a very niche fan base. And I think that that's uh, important because it doesn't do no good to build a product in all the time, money, artwork, layout, and then not have anybody that actually wants it. Um, what I really like about this chapter is it talks about the difference versus cost versus revenue. And a big mistake that many people make is buying hundreds of dollars of stock art or for a book that makes them less than a few hundred bucks. So you really got to keep those costs in mind when you're building a product. As we're going through, as you can tell, this is a really long book, 124 pages, and it is all really, really um, good details. Um, and one of the things that I think uh, he does touch on, and that's, you know, 12 chapters of this is there's many different roads to the treasure, to finding the and earning what it, uh, it is you're looking to do, whether it's um, make music. I've seen, you know, uh, people who play on the bard theme, for instance, to make, you know, D&D related music and stuff, whether you're publishing a game or a novel, all of that comes down to um, just making sure that you as a um, business owner at this point, because that's what you're going to become if you're trying to make money as a business owner, is trying to detail out what it's going to cost, who your market is, and how are you going to get the word out. Um, and that's definitely something that needs to be considered that um, there's so many roads, whether it's writing or publishing or, or self uh, self publishing, right? Uh, vlogging, blogging, streaming, podcasts, you know, talking on talking on Reddit and Twitter and engaging an audience. There are so many different ways to to reach out and find your audience. But once you do, you have to you have to continually um feed the audience. And he talks a lot about uh, those sorts of details in the first chapter. Um, now, one of the things that I really uh, uh, like is he's kind of got a, like a, a roadmap here of stuff that can help you, you get through the process early on, which is really um, fantastic. He worked with us on Extraordinary Expeditions, for example, uh, which you can find at our website at Um And 
talks about kind of the challenges and stuff that comes with that and knowing your 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 audience right uh, chapter two talks about building a community once again now that you know your audience it's not just it's not just throwing them food and hoping they eat it you really have to know what they like what they want and how you're going to keep them engaged um his details in uh building a community is really interesting because when you're going through and if you've got 17,000 followers, it doesn't do no good if those followers don't see your content, aren't engaged with your content, um, or don't even know your content is available. And, you know, whether it's social media such as Facebook or Twitter, they're not going to show every post you make to every one of your followers because those people are all vying for your attention. So he really gives some strong details about um the consistency and the authenticity of engagement you want to weed out the all the 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 passive people and find the 100 people that will support and consistently engage with your material which is on one thing that really <laughs> i wish i would have learned we i mean we finally figured this out so i like to engage with um the don't the the people who failed to don't be a dick and it didn't occur to me that because I was engaging with those, it was showing more of my content to those people, which aren't the people I want to see. So you really got to you got to work on building the community and, you know, uh, avoiding the the toxic people. And he goes into quite a rant about that. And that's not something we had considered until uh, much, much more recently. So keep an eye on that sort of stuff as you're building a community and a tribe. So going back to the table of contents here, uh, I want to give kind of an overview of each of the chapters because I think there's a lot of great points in each of these that um, uh, he, RJ touches on really well. So uh, adventures in writing is one of the more interesting and fun ways to potentially make a profit. Um, and he goes into the the complexities of writing adventures and and the selling of the adventures. But he does make note that a lot of people do adventures. So while there's a market for it, there's also it's also kind of flooded, and it can be difficult to kind of separate yourself from the the uh, other people <laughs> in the pool, right? So uh, he goes into good detail and gives some pretty solid advice that really. Um, says that hey if you're writing the stuff anyway there's no hurt in, in in pushing it out there but if you are going to do that make sure you you know add some nice art and layout and go through the the, the heavy duty lifting and making sure it looks presentable because there's going to be a lot of competition out there something that is very debatable in chapter four he talks about running games um this is definitely something that is controversial in many people uh to many people um, as it's a hobby and it shouldn't cost, you know, it shouldn't cost people money, but so does, I, movies are a hobby, right? Golf is a hobby. All these things that we do as a hobby are money. So it's not uh, uncommon that a dungeon master would want to uh, run as a service, especially considering there's so many more players than dungeon masters, right? So some of the options he talks about that I think is really cool is, you know, running at local gaming shops. That is a really good one because not only does it incentivize people to come to those shops, but it also gives the players a place to go if they don't have act people that want to play. And I think that that's a really good um, tool. Conventions is another good one. If you are going to a convention, sometimes you can get into the convention for feet just for running games for so many people, um, which is really good. Special events and services. I know several friends who have uh, gave from Interparty Conflict had run as a service at uh, his local library. So um, as, you know, RJ is discussing these things, these are real opportunities and services that are available that if you want to make a few extra bucks a week, that you could go and run a game in uh, at your local library and have a really good time. Uh, in chapter four, he talks extensively about the, uh, the um, streaming and podcasting aspect of um, gaming right uh one of the interesting details is he talks on that you know performers aren't necessarily your friends right your friends aren't performers and that's something we forget from the little nitpicky things that they do um and that's something that critical role has really done really well and he talks a little bit about that um that you know 
getting into the podcasting and streaming has never been easier because everyone's got phones these days and they got really good cameras and microphones. But most people that play a game aren't trying to entertain an audience. So if you are going to go that route, make sure the people that are involved are focused on entertaining the audience, not necessarily just themselves, though sometimes those you know coincide. Uh, there are legal concerns when you group up with people on streaming, whether it's pay or using your likeness or stuff. So there are some things that go with that. Um, and he gives really good details and the realistic expectations that are really necessary for those. Um, in chapter six, uh, they, RJ talks really about the, the, the blogging and podcasting content um, kind of in, in um, tandem. And if you do it right, you can get uh, a good opportunity to even convert, you know, podcasts into blogs and vice versa and embed them and link them back to each other. So it gives some really good advice in there that I thought was uh, pretty fantastic. Chapter eight, it goes into more details about running conventions and volunteering and how to convert those to sales. Uh, I really was uh, intrigued by this since uh, we recently ran, uh, sold our own booth. Um, so some of the advice in there I am going to be taking with me uh, into the future. And I was really surprised by the the, the detail and little things like uh, something you think would common sense is engage with the other, you know, vendors, which I think is really great because then you build those contacts and, and, and build friendships to people who are in kind of the same niche as you. And if they're not, you can kind of cross pollinate, which is really good. In chapter nine, it talks quite a bit about crowdfunding in good detail. As I mentioned, we've done a few of those and uh, one thing that I think is um, he talks on that's very you need to be very careful of is from uh, from if you're not right with the money, if you're not careful, filling your goals and uh, sending your product to backers can break the bank and sometimes even cost you more if you're not careful. So lots of good warnings, lots of great advice in that section. I was really impressed with it. He does go into more detail in chapter 10 about, you know, the difference between storytelling and fiction writing and kind of how to, um, you know, market the difference between those. Um, I'm not a fr fiction writer as like a novelist. So um, I took a lot of the ideas that he shared and I think that I can leverage that in the future. Um, one thing he did talk about in that section is how important editing is. You can be the worst writer in the world. As long as you got money to pay a good editor to fix it, you can put out pretty good content. So no matter how bad you think you are, go for it. And I think that's a really good takeaway from it. Um, in chapter 11, uh, he goes over uh, content writing and copywriting, um, which writing is writing. It doesn't matter what it is you're writing. So diversifying your content is one of the best things that you can, you can do. You know, if you write fifth edition content, go write Pathfinder content. If you write Pathfinder content, go write Numenera content and just kind of spread out of the box of your comfort zone. You can even take a product if you write it in a good enough way. You, talk, you, know, you can then write it for one game and then rewrite some portions of it to fit another game. In chapter 12, uh, one of the biggest things is he talks about you know, building a catalog because having one book, you might get lucky and sell thousands of them, but more likely, you might get a trickle of sales after the post-launch if you're not pushing it every day. So having a, a, a huge uh, catalog means if you've got 100 books selling one each a day, your, you know, your income coming in is going to be significantly higher. But that also is a lot more work. And so for me, I think that every little detail that he touched on in uh, Money Masters, uh, guide to you know making money for profit um is really just done in a fantastic capacity and the one thing he does talk about that i think many people can end up easily forgetting is how important it is to have fun in the process it is work it is going to take time it is going to be stressful you're going to have roadblocks and challenges that are going to really just eat up your time and build stress um but with that um, comes a bit of fun and, you know, enjoyment to knowing you've built something, uh, whether it's a podcast or a YouTube channel, um, whatever direction you decide to go. I think overall it is um, something that is, there's an opportunity for everyone to earn a little bit extra. 
whether you take it just as a, a side gig or you decide you want it to try to be your full-time job, there are moments when you're going to get stressful. And so you just got to remember that, you know, there's, there's opportunity out there. And if you're going to go for it, you got to be all in. When you get to the end of it, whatever it is, no matter how little success it is or isn't, you've created something that most people don't. And you should be proud of that. Um, and constantly pushing it is a way to ensure it reaches other people, cross promotion, all that stuff is touched on in the Money Master's Guide. And I really think that if you're looking to give this a try, this book is an absolute, you know, great starting point. And I highly recommend it to any and all that are ready to go down that path. Um, if you're interested, um, I recommend checking out. You can find a link in the description at rebrand.ly slash Money Master's Guide. Please consider checking it out, and uh, I hope to hope to partner with you and see you see you in all your glory and success. Keep your blades sharp and spells prepared, heroes.